Okay. Welcome, welcome back, everybody. Let's let's start the final final session of today. Um, please take a seat. And um, thanks a lot for everybody stay, um, bearing with us and attending our last session today. Um, also to people online which might be joining our session, a warm welcome from my side. Um, my name is Moritz Schäfer. I'm um, project manager for the JTP uh, on the ground activities that we're doing and that we will be presenting today here in the session. Um, today's, today's session um, has three main objectives. We want to inform you about the different activities that we have been carrying out since the beginning of this year um, in, the, in the regions across Europe. A lot of them have been mentioned um, over to, um, today and, and also yesterday, um, and I would like to pin down a little bit once more what are all of these activities and what we are um, doing. We also want to hear from some of the beneficiaries of JTP Groundwork and hear from their experience um, what, the, what they have learned and how our work has, has impacted their just transition. And finally, we also want to be in discussion with you. We want to hear your, your questions and um, your remarks um, to JTP Groundwork and all other activities. Um, so without further ado, I would first of all like to welcome uh, Miriam Boveda to the stage, who will give an introduction a speech. She's um, a team leader for sustainable gro growth at DG Regio, and the floor is yours. Thanks a lot, uh, Moritz. Uh, I'm delighted to uh, uh, start with this session on the uh, Just Transition Platform Groundwork. Um, just to recall, uh, when uh, the European crea Commission created uh, the Just Transition Platform uh, in 2020, um, this was a platform launched uh, and refers to uh, under the European Green Deal communication and the aim uh, uh, was to ensure all stakeholders have the guidance, information and knowledge uh, what they need actually to support a just transition to a climate neutral economy. And uh, uh, the launch was led by DG Rijo and uh, we, uh, we, we've, we have now a key tool to help member states and regions to unlock the support available through the just transition mechanism. Uh, it includes uh, different strands of support and uh, we see that there is a huge need of support actually. Uh, yesterday uh, we had uh, a poll showing how, how much support is needed in particular uh, strength, to strengthen the administrative capacity or strengthen expertise because this was uh, among the 100, uh, almost 100 people who uh, answered the poll. It, this was the number one uh, need in order to uh, implement just transition. Um, so uh, one of the main pillars of the just transition platform is uh, the advisory support on the ground that we will deliver and we uh, are delivering already um, with the just, just transition platform grant work. Uh, we deployed it in 2023 for first uh, six beneficiaries. And the support includes uh, capacity building, dedicated workshops, several events with a needs-based focus on GTF implementation. And uh, within the support, we have a bigger uh, conference per hosting region, um, which uh, creates a forum for exchange of good practices be between the local stakeholders. So um, I wanted also to say that uh, uh, from, so we have the Just Transition Platform Secretariat. We have also uh, a team uh, dealing with the Just Transition in DG Ritu and we will reinforce the team. So we have uh, published uh, uh, a specific uh, call for uh, an additional uh, colleague who, who we hope will join, join us at the beginning of 2024. Um, it's a, a seconded national expert position, so uh, if people are interested, uh, you, you have to apply through your member state and we will be happy to have 
um, candidates and uh, to, to discuss uh, the specific uh, tasks. Um, I wanted to say that in addition of the Just Transition Platform groundwork, uh, we have many streams of support which have been uh, discussed uh, during this conference. So it's the TTP working groups which have gathered already and um, they are uh, set up and implement actions relevant for carbon intensive sectors to make the transition in their territories. And we have so far four uh, sectorial working groups uh, uh, working on salmon still um, um, on stakeholder engagement and also on uh, uh, chemi chemistry. We have the GTP ex exchange program for experts and regions, which offers targeted advice uh, and peer-to-peer -peer review, job mentoring or inter-regional pairings. We have also the GTP Knowledge Repository, which reports with reports, toolkits, and case studies on numerous uh, aspects of just transition process. And we have the GTP Communication Campaign and Awareness Raising Activities. Uh, we have also launched, and you have some an information spot there, uh, on the uh, Vision for Transitions Community of Practice. And this is support that we are granting uh, for the implementation of uh, a cohesion policy mainstream and uh, policy objective two. And uh, it is a community-based platform that aims to support EU member states and regions to make a better use of EU funds for sustainability transitions. So uh, to finish, uh, uh, we are open to all the suggestions. You see that we are different strands of support that are available. Um, and uh, uh, as regards the different types of uh, the needs in terms of technical assistance, and uh, we want to fit, make, make our support fit to your needs. So we are here also to listen to you. Um, we will launch a new call for GTP groundwork support in early 2024 and uh, we hope that it will receive as much success as the first uh, call that we had launched in 2023. So without further ado, I will uh, leave the, the floor now to Moritz to, to animate this call. Thank you, Miriam. Um, thank you for also already introducing some of the of the elements um, which I want to go into a little bit more detail now. Um, it has been very unpopular over the last two days to show slides, um, I experienced, so that's why I'm going to show some slides. Um, so um, if you can please uh, pull on the presentation exactly, um, please to the to the next slide, this is our agenda, I introduced that, yes, no, the next slide here exactly. Um, so to, to pin down once more um, the, the activities that, that we are providing and the support that's being provided. Um, if, if you have been participating at the seventh conference, which happened in, in April, um, you might have also joined our session uh, where we already introduced the different elements that we would be carrying out. At that time, um, everything was still in a very early and, and planning stage. So uh, we, have, we have much advanced over the time, um, so we can already give um, much more insights on, on what the services actually are and what their impact is. So here you can see once more um, the different different activities that we have. So first of all, it's JT Peers, and it's mentioned several times over the last two days here. And JT Peers is actually two different uh, parts which are which are combined. So the first one is the exchange between regions. JT Peer exchange is an exchange between uh, from region to region, but also from expert to region. It's also um, an expert database that I will go into de uh, more detail on, on another slide. Um, and then we have JTP Knowledge Hub, um, which is the repository of a lot of toolkits and case studies. And then the third one is JTP Groundwork, which, ha which has also been mentioned several times, um, which is the provision of technical assistance. So. Um, 
if you can please go to the next slide, um, you can now see, and, and, and today is the first day, and I'm uh, very excited, that um, with this slide here, as of now, we're uh, launching the JTPeers Experts database. And you might have been aware of a call we had um, some month ago where we were asking for experts of the Just Transition to, um, to participate, and uh, we have had a selection process, and today we are launching this, this database, and you will find a lot of experts, and, and we have um, over, over 80, here it says 75, but it's actually over 80 experts, um, which will be on this database. If you check out the website now, you can use this uh, QR code here, you will see about around 40, and we're filling up as we speak. Um, so there's more to come in the next couple of days, so please uh, bear with us. But ha please have a look. Um, there's a lot of experts here in the room, which you will also find there on the, uh, in the database. Um, and we will have, there will be an official next um, application round next year, but we have received a lot of uh, questions, actually, whether people could participate in, in the database already now. So we're in discussion with the colleagues from DJ Regio here um, if we cannot already launch a, another maybe smaller call um, before the end of the year. So um, please stay tuned for more information about this. Next slide, please. The JTPers exchange, and um, I will not go into detail of the different exchanges that there are. Um, uh, there's seven matches which are going live now. The first meetings have taken place. Some of them are yet still planned. But um, what I wanted to, to focus on here in this, in this slide is the different uh, topics these exchanges uh, tackle. So as an inspiration, maybe also uh, for, others, for others. So um, um, there is the, the Just Transition Observatory is one of the topics. It's sharing methods of multi-level governance. Um, it's the development of industrial purposes on, on post-mining landscapes. Uh, participatory and community-led approaches uh, to economic diversification. Um, there is stakeholder engagement and economic diversification, cross-border cooperation, land restoration, um, energy communities, and attracting investments. So you can see there is a broad range of topics which are of interest. Many of them we have discussed over the last two days as well. Um, so that I, there is clearly the need to, to go further into this. Um, and these are the first seven JTPers exchanges which are taking place. Again here, um, there will be more to come. Next, year, um, next year's there will be new uh, exchanges, new matches. So um, please also be here, um, stay, stay tuned for the next call and, 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 and for, you, for you to participate. Our JTP Knowledge Hub, and maybe you've seen either Belbina holding up two of these um, um, toolkits that we have developed, or maybe you've also seen them in the entrance um, and picked up your, your copy. So we have been uh, developing a lot of these knowledge products, which are toolkits um, and or case studies on a lot of different topics. And these topics came from the discussions here at the conference, they came from the technical assistance, they came from exchanges, they came from a lot of discussions around um, where there is need for support um, and actually to write something down, to have guidelines, to have these, these toolkits or some, some of these best practice, how, how did others do it? And um, you can see here on the slide that the first two toolkits are published, that's on, on gender and elderly people. Um, and there is a whole list of additional toolkits and case studies which we will be providing in the next couple of, of weeks. So all of them are under preparation, uh, but they're not published yet, but they will be soon. Um, Next slide, please. And this is my final slide on, on JTP groundwork. Um, so you might have seen this map before. 
um, with the different beneficiaries on them, um, Midio Tejo, Wichki, Vesterbottom, um, Riga Technical University, the city of Sokolov, and um, the Juveli regions, which are, the, um, which are the beneficiaries of the first round of groundwork. And some of the, um, the, the impacts that, that we already see in, in the work, and I try to give a little bit of broad picture because we are going to hear uh, in more detail from the beneficiaries them, themselves what they think the, the impacts have been for their regions. Um, but what we have done is to enhance knowledge through co-creation to work together with the regions and to link needs with international experience. Um, we've had a series of, of events, workshops and um, events where we've also brought in international experience and discussed the topics at hand. Um, we have, uh, through our work, increased the capacity to implement Just Transition Fund projects. And that's a, a broad range of, of, of support, such as trainings, analysis, strategy development, or uh, support in technical documents. We have brought to the regions um, a lot of new methods of, of stakeholder engagement um, to, to, to strengthen the um, collaboration. That's focus groups and that's also providing platforms, platforms to, to exchange, platforms to, to talk to each other um, from authorities with SMEs, um, with enterprises and the different stakeholders involved um, to, to support the transition process and, and to speed up things. Um, we have um, supported projects with new impetus and energy, and I think it has been mentioned yesterday that we increased the speed. And it's, of course, necessary that the speed continues also after, um, after the, the technical assistance is over, and, and, and that's um, where we are trying to help the regions. And finally, um, we've increased awareness um, about JTP, JTF projects among local stakeholders, and boosting the, the inter-regional um, promotion. I think one additional point that, that can be mentioned is um, oftentimes together in this co-creation process, we've seen that a lot more than can be done than which was originally maybe planned or seen. And I think together um, we have already progressed quite far and I would like now to pass on the word to my colleague, Victoria Beckman, um, to lead our panel discussion here with three of the beneficiaries. One thing I forgot to mention in the beginning, sorry, um, was that um, one of our panelists will be speaking in, in Czech, so um, please have the app available, um, the Interactio app, and um, be, be ready to, to uh, use the interpretation. So with that being said, I hand over to Victoria. Thank you. Welcome, everyone. I had the pleasure to coordinate the delivery, delivery of, of six technical assistances that Moritz has just presented. And I have been closely involved in the delivery of the wood uh, of the technical assistance for wood. And um, we are lucky to have the, our main beneficiary with us today. And I would like to welcome Małgorzata Misiak to the stage. She is the deputy director of the JTF department in the Marshal's office of Wuzkie. Welcome. I would also like to welcome Elina Raczko from uh, the Vaktale uh, planning region. She is the spatial planning specialist. And um, the focus of the technical assistance in Latvia is to develop a strategy for uh, the restoration of historic peat extraction sites. Welcome. And I forgot to mention Mogojata, in which uh, we focus on the design of a support scheme for SMEs and we are going to hear about it more in a second. And then last but not least, we have Petr Kubis, uh, the mayor of the city of Sokolov from the Czech Republic. Welcome to the stage. <laughs> the focus of the technical assistance in Sokolovsko is to develop a stakeholder engagement and a communication strategy for the implementation of the JTF. 
And uh, we've heard a lot about this topic actually um, already today, but um, it's good to, to hear how, um, what are the activities implemented in Sokolovsko. So thank you for joining. Thanks. Um, I have put the focus of the technical assistance on the slide, and I also linked it to your introduction. But to start with, I would like to uh, give uh, the floor to you and actually ask you to, um, in a very short, uh, very briefly, in one sentence, summarize what was the key challenge with which you applied to JTP Groundwork. And Mogujata, I would like to start with you. Uh, the biggest challenge we had was to get the tailor-made um, support scheme for SMEs that would be adjusted to the local needs and to the offerings of business support institution. In, we wanted to have something new, something exceptional, so there was the need for uh, mapping of what is available. We also uh, wanted something, uh, we wanted to draw from the experiences of other regions, so it called for selected case studies. And in practical terms, we wanted a paper, a deliverable, that would be a basis for a call for proposal to be held in 2024. Thank you so much. Alina, what was the challenge with which you applied to JTP Groundwork? Uh, firstly, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm really grateful for these two uh, fulfilling days, and I hope that our experience will be useful for you as well. Um, Latvia and Widzeme is uh, rich with the uh, peatlands, and um, we have this historical heritage, uh, not in a good way, uh, with uh, uh, peat, extract, extracted peat uh, sites that haven't been recultivated. And our aim was to investigate uh, the most optional ways uh, for recultivation and reproposing uh, these extract uh, peatlands, uh, considering environment, social, and of course, economic uh, aspects. Thank you so much. And now, please, everyone, um, use your headphones. Petr, how was it for the city of Sokolov? What was the main challenge? Dobrý den, ještě jednou. Moje angličtina není dobrá, takže vám moc děkuji, že můžu, můžu mluvit v českém jazyce. U nás se jedná o uhelný region. Uhlí se těží už od roku 1892 a my jsme se dostali do fáze, že se hodně mluví o transformaci, ale lidé ji nevěří. A proto pro nás bylo velmi důležité, aby technická pomoc přišla ve chvíli, kdy jsme nastavili novou komunikační platformu, rozhodli jsme se, že si vypracujeme vlastní plán spravedlivé územní transformace, pouze pro, pouze pro tu lokalitu, pro tu uhelnou lokalitu. A bylo pro nás důležité, abychom do regionu dostali příklady dobré praxe, aby lidé uvěřili, že transformace má smysl a byli motivováni dále k další práci. Thank you so much. Um, we are already in the, at the end of October, so we are actually six months into the technical assistance. Hence, I would like to zoom in on the impact that you could identify um, during the duration of the program. And maybe I will start with you, Petr. Um, what has, have been the impacts that you could identify so far? Stalo se mnohé. Uh, máme za sebou dva workshopy, máme za sebou konferenci, mezinárodní konferenci, která proběhla v minulém týdnu a ona se jmenovala Sokolovsko inspiruje. A já jsem rád, že tam vystoupili kolegové z Rumunska, Slovenska, Irska. A já jsem pochopil, že ta konference se měla jmenovat Sokolovsko inspiruje, ale Sokolovsko se inspiruje. Já za to moc děkuji, protože jsme se dozvěděli mnoho, mnoho nových věcí. Čeká nás ještě jeden workshop. A co je důležité, 
na konci roku bychom měli mít výstupy. A ty výstupy se zapracují do našeho plánu spravedlivé území transformace. Takže děkujeme za technickou pomoc. Má to smysl a opravdu nám to moc pomohlo. Thank you so much. We will take some time to ask later on about the methods that have been used um, in the workshops. But um, next, I would like to move on to you, Maugujata, and ask you about the impacts you could see, observe in Witske so far. Mm -hmm. I would like to mention three issues. First of all, the works we've done, the meetings we've, uh, we've, have, mm. we've had, they facilitated the dialogue between the local entrepreneur and us, I mean the public authority, the managing authority. And you know, it's been um, said a lot, of, um, uh, a lot on the principle of uh, programming and the, the principle of partnership. So the principle in designing and implementing the EU support has always been very uh, important uh, while implementing the EU support. But I must say that the JTP grant work brought it to another dimension to higher level. Now it seems to me that there is no other way than to go out to people, to businesses, to talk, to ask, to co-create. And I think that uh, I have no doubt that such an approach can facilitate the implementation of EU support and it can increase its effectiveness and efficiency by increased by stronger ownership of the rules that are adopted. And, you know, JTF was something new for, for us, for all. And we, on one hand, we were uh, mentally and technically accustomed to the intervention schemes under the ERDF and ESF. But on the other hand, we wanted to go beyond the schemes, to create something special, something, something, something exceptional, to find the third way in which the JTF, in my opinion, should be. And I think that the best way to address this programming challenge is, to, uh, is dialogue. And now I would like to follow the approach I've learned here in other policy domain, in other uh, intervention. Uh, another um, lesson uh, to be learned and uh, great experience was that the meetings we've had, that they uh, raised the awareness of local businesses on the um, support opportunities in the region. But for them also, the JTF is something new. They are very interested and very keen on this form of, uh, form of financing. But we also took these uh, events, took these opportunities to talk about the just transition. Because uh, in my region, the awareness of these inevitable changes and development challenges is very, very low. And I think that it is imperative to talk to people, to convince them that these changes may be good if they are managed properly. So that was also the opportunity to show the uh, support um, challenge opportunities in broader context, in the context of just transition. And thirdly, a little bit uh, selfishnessly, uh, is that the JTP was uh, value added for us, for managing authority. As you probably know, uh, there are the representatives of uh, managing authority. In our everyday work, we are preoccupied with day-to-day uh, -day, uh, technicalities like selection of projects uh, to be financed, payment applications, and so on. And now we had to stop, to think, to rethink, to co-create. And I must say that it woke up people's creativity, innovativeness, and enthusiasm. And I must say that uh, what is very pleasant for us is that it is uh, noticed and highly rated by our stakeholders, which of course builds our credibility and trust in our institution among the stakeholders in the region. So these are these three lessons. 
Thank you, Malgorzata. This is wonderful to hear. And thank you for bringing up the example how you can engage stakeholders and actually a target group of an inter intervention during the implementation process. We had that yesterday on the panel and we've heard that today again during the communication session, that it's not only about engaging stakeholders when you're planning a strategy, but it's really also when you're actually spending the money, asking them, how exactly shall I spend it? Not only if I should spend it, but what exactly do you need? Exactly. Happy to hear that was inspirational. Elena, what about your region? What impacts could you see so far on your work or also on the strategy development? Uh, I, I would like to start that uh, we have a wonderful team. Uh, thank you, Bettina, Gabriel, and Raman for your support. Uh, we are glad about the path, how we have started this. And um, I would uh, divide uh, or main uh, what has been done in two parts. Uh, firstly, uh, we were focusing on awareness um, improvement uh, racing uh, because uh, as a regional institution, we work directly with uh, municipalities and with their help, we can involve also private sector. And uh, that, that's why it was crucial for us to bring this awareness firstly with municipalities and also to understand um, what capacities they are lacking. And uh, definitely, I think uh, we are on the right way. Uh, we started to raise this awareness within our uh, uh, two days workshop that was really valuable. And now we uh, understand the current situation more. We know uh, what data do we have because data in peatland restoration is crucial uh, because each option is um, uh, only some of the, um, uh, let's, let's say like uh, each, each, re each restoration option requires specific uh, circumstances to, to manage that. And uh, yeah, that was the first, uh, uh, the first um, big um, uh, achievement in our technical assistance. And the second one is more technical uh, with, the, uh, with our uh, expert team and uh, by taking into account existing uh, pro uh, projects and studies, we, have, uh, we are on our way to create a, a decision support a tool that will be used by peatland owners to help them uh, make um, data-driven uh, decisions and, um, and also to be well informed about the greenhouse gas emissions in each option, about economic uh, benefits for, for each recultivation option, and as, a, as well as some social, for example, some workplace uh, that will be uh, created uh, in each restoration option. And uh, although and that has, uh, um, although we have created this uh, framework, there is still a lot of uh, work to be done because, uh, yeah, we see, we see definitely that uh, we will need to improve this lack of data. And now we have like more argument, arguments when uh, we will speak with responsible ministries uh, for support that will be needed when this uh, implementation, uh, uh, implementation uh, support will be created. Uh, now we, we know the, what exactly we need to, to ex explain to them and to, together with them we can foster the implementation of the of the, uh, this specific measure for recultivation. Thank you so much, and thank you for showing that there is also, there, it's not an end of the technical assistance, but more research needs to be done. Uh, we are going to come back to the question of the role of research in your technical assistance in a few minutes. Um, but I think we've all heard yesterday over coffee and today that the session yesterday with the practitioners was highly valued because we spoke about the very specific processes and tools that have been used across um, JTF regions. And that's why I would like to now focus on specific elements of each of the technical assistances. And I will start with you, Mau Um We know that Increasing the level of entrepreneurship and diversifying in the economy is a key goal of, I would be brave to say, all of the TJTPs, um, but for sure most of them. Um, so what aha moments could you share with uh, JTF, reg JTF regions who are in the process of designing a support scheme for the local entrepreneurs? Yeah, very well. 
a few aha moments for, uh, for us. And I think that the first came from the mapping. Because when we uh, did the mapping, uh, the researchers from the University of Łódź, they have identified 120 different support measures for SMEs available in regions. Majority of which, this is to say, 75% uh, were financial assistance, 20% uh, um, training, and less than 10% uh, consulting services. But uh, there was no uh, ready available information on these schemes. And, uh, you know, the programs, they focused either on finance, uh, financing or on training or on um, consulting, there were very few integrated approaches, the program that offered integrated um, support. So the first learnings for us were very straightforward. Don't duplicate, uh, try to integrate, build bridges, uh, encourage to go further, to implement, uh, find bottlenecks in the program, and what's more important, inform. So that was the first aha and the first lessons to be drawn from this uh, surprising, surprising uh, findings. Uh, the second aha, and that was actually a huge surprise, was that the business environment institutions that were involved in the process of uh, designing the scheme were either um, inactive or very innovative. And I must say that it was actually a big surprise. And we are looking for the reasons of this status quo. And I think that there might be a kind of, you know, project fatigue among these institutions. They were mm, subject, they were the operators of many programs uh, uh, financed from the EU funds. And they have also uh, different uh, experiences in implementing this uh, program. So as a result, they prefer to navigate charted waters than, the, than um, to break the new grounds. So it was very surprising, but again for us it's a clear message that uh, some effort must be made to encourage them to participate in our scheme. And while implemented, uh, there must be also a closer monitoring of what's, uh, what's going on uh, in order to ensure the innovativeness and the high quality of the scheme. So uh, that was mm, another surprising observation and finding in our process. And the third one was that there are uh, very interesting and very well suited uh, programs for underrepresented groups, like uh, women, like uh, young people, young disabled. But believe me or not, they struggle with low participations. Uh, so it was quite surprising. And I think that we must focus on creating a good, uh, well-targeted outreach strategies to address this group of people. So there were the biggest aha from what has been done so far. Thank you so much. While you were sharing, I thought uh, about all the other ahas in the technical assistance. And I wanted to invite um, the audience and everyone who is listening to us or um, will learn about the outcomes of the technical assistances to actually reach out to the regions, not only the three beneficiaries mm -hmm. here on stage, but to also the, the other three to ask about learnings from the technical assistance. If, you, if the challenge resonates with you, there have been many reports being produced, uh, mm -hmm. many workshops, many learnings that I'm sure the regions are very happy to share. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, Petr, I would like to continue with you. Um, so, um, the Technical assistance for Sokolovsko focuses on communication and stakeholder engagement. We have heard plenty of tips today in the communication session, how to do it effectively. Um, but I would like to ask you, what does stakeholder engagement mean in Sokolovsko? How is it being implemented? And which methods used during the technical assistance did you find particularly helpful? Také potřeba říci, že... <laughs> My jsme začali pracovat ještě než technická pomoc do našeho uhelného regionu přišla a přišla v pravý čas. Uhelný region Sokolovsko je 20 obcí. 
města a obcí. Největším městem je Sokolov, má 23 tisíc obyvatel. Byly k době, kde jsme měli 25 tisíc obyvatel, ale bohužel máme nový fenomén. V době, kdy se otvíraly jednotlivé lomy a bylo jich sedm na Sokolovsku, tak přicházeli tisíce lidí, přicházeli za prací, osidlovali Sokolovsko. Vyčežili jsme do dnešního dne přes miliardu tun uhlí. Ale bohužel tím, jak se jednotlivé lomy začínají zavírat, tak nám lidé odcházejí. Nevidí budoucnost v našem regionu. A smutné je, že nám odcházejí naše děti, odchází nám naše budoucnost. Proto jsme se rozhodli, že je potřeba něco začít dělat. Oslovili jsme všech 20 obcí a je potřeba říct, že jsou to malé obce, které, které mají třeba jenom pár tisíc obyvatel, stovky obyvatel a nemají ten aparát, který by se připravil na transformaci, na čerpání fondu Spravedlivé transformace. A dohodli jsme se, že budeme pracovat společně. Oslovili jsme je, uzavřeli jsme memorandum s tím, že nikoho nenecháme, nenecháme padnout, protože vlastně ten uhelný region je živý organismus, každý má svoji důležitost. Uzavřeli jsme memorandum o společném postupu s tím, že k tomu memorandu se přidali i největší zaměstnavatele. Máme štěstí, protože firma, která těží uhlí, je patriot toho regionu. To znamená, že oni s námi společně podepsali memorandum a druhý největší zaměstnavatel jsou chemické závody u nás na Sokolovsku. A samozřejmě, co je logické, tak do memoranda se připojil Karlovarský kraj. No a řekli jsme si teda, pojďme pracovat, nečekejme na pomoc, víme, co se děje v našem regionu a dohodli jsme se, o čem už jsem hovořil, vytvoříme plán spravedlivé územní transformace. On už existuje na úrovni kraje, ale vytvořme si ten plán v té jádrové oblasti, tady u nás na Sokolovsku. A já jsem za to rád, protože vlastně s tímto nám pomohl Karlovarský kraj a bonusem je, že ten náš místní plán zpracovává stejná společnost, která zpracovala ten velký, ten regionální takže se tam hledají pro vazby. Dalším krokem, kterým jsme si řekli, že půjdeme, že vytvoříme pracovní skupiny. Vytvořili jsme jich 11, do kterých se zapojilo 120 lidí z celé té úhelné oblasti, kdy jsme řešili ty jednotlivá téma, která prostě ten náš region trápí. Ať je to zdravotnictví, vzdělávání, nové pracovní příležitosti. S tím, že výstupem by měly být svod analýzy, které vlastně popíšou silné stránky, slabé stránky, příležitosti, hrozby. A tento proces již máme hotový. A do toho nám přišla technická pomoc, což byl obrovský bonus, protože nám do toho vnesla ty podněty z Evropy. A tento, tento materiál bychom měli mít hotový na konci roku. To znamená, že práce pracovních skupin, zpracovává se plán spravedlivé územní transformace a technická pomoc. A do toho běží, jak jsem již hovořil, workshopy, běží do toho mezinárodní konference, která byla obrovským přínosem. A na těch workshopech se pracuje s těmi lidmi, kteří jsou v těch skupinách. A jsou tam lékaři, jsou tam úředníci, jsou tam policisté, jsou tam neziskové organizace. Všichni společně tvoříme budoucnost našeho regionu, protože říkáme, prožili jsme uhelný příběh, ten končí, začneme psát nový příběh o Sokolovsku. Takže to je ta naše, naše snaha, to je to zapojení všech těch, kteří vlastně v regionu žijí. A co je podstatné a pro mě je to nejdůležitější, že jsem pochopil i příchodem technické pomoci, že lidé začínají transformaci věřit. A to je pro nás to zásadní. Thank you so much. Um, for sharing your experiences, and um, it is a very interesting case in the, Sokol in the city of Sokolov that you are developing your own local plan. Um, and um, thank you for sharing your experiences, how you are engaging stakeholders in, in this process. Elina, I would like to ask you about the role of the, in this particular case, the Riga Technical University in the technical assistance. Um, we have heard on the previous panel from the university representatives and from the representatives of the European Commission, how they see the role of universities and academics in the process of just transition. And I would like to ask you, how do you see that from the perspective of the region? Uh, indeed, uh, we are happy that we have this possibility to cooperate with universities. And I can definitely agree with uh, the main key, uh, takeaways from previous um, uh, previous session about the role of universities. Uh, the participation of Riga Technical University has uh, brought a 
high value to the aim of our uh, technical assistance, um, uh, ma mainly in terms of this uh, decision support tool because it is technical and they are the ones that convert the, that um, the um, scientific uh, literature uh, to like to language that we understand and we are happy that we can we have managed to understand each other uh, as well as um, they can provide the information about they can support us with uh, identifi identification of measures that brings the best co2 benefits and uh, also about the re renewable resource uh, application and uh, a big support to uh, peatland owners uh, from the database uh, solutions and uh, and we are really grateful that uh, we had this possibility to to work with them and we will definitely continue this and they have uh, we should definitely um, yeah we should definitely continue continue do that thank you thank you so much we are unfortunately at the end of our experience sharing session and i want to save some time for questions um, so maybe let's wrap up this experience sharing part with one last very short question and you can share one advice to other regions who plan to apply to JTP Groundwork next year, what would be your advice when formulating the application? One sentence, who would like to take? Okay, so my advice would be uh, to how um, a specific concrete picture before you start, although it is possible to change, uh, change the way it, uh, as it was in our experience, because during, uh, during the technical assistance we understood that something works differently than we thought it works. Uh, but yeah, to have the main picture, uh, to structure the work well, to set the achievable results uh, and to, to co communicate well with the experts to try to give them as much information as as you can because they are trying uh, to understand the situation completely from the outside and uh, the best you can uh, try to explain the, the more effective the work will be and of course involve as much stakeholders as you can. Thank you. Yeah. Mogujata, do you want to add? I agree with um, uh, Elena. Uh, realize uh, what you want and feel what you need because uh, like in other projects the more specific you are the better you know what you need the better cooperation and uh, the better outcome of it of uh, this cooperation and i would like to take the chance and to thanks uh, the jtp grant work team for wonderful cooperation uh, very fruitful and uh, giving a lot of uh, fun <laughs> and satisfaction, which is also important. Another um, advice is apply. Uh, because uh, I must say, and what we have appreciated a lot about the technical assistance is that the formalities, including the uh, EU survey uh, form to fill in, are very simple. And it is very important be because we are all uh, busy, so apply. And I think that the success factor behind uh, this first wave of technical assistance is the uh, fast pace of works. And, okay, on one hand, it calls for strong determination, a commitment, but I think it's good to the final product. So these are the, the messages from, from Wutzke. Thank you so much. Petr, would you like to add to that? Já se přidám ke kolegyním, myslím, že důležité je být připravený. Bylo dobré, že když přišla technická pomoc, tak my už jsme měli ty materiály z těch pracovních, pracovních skupin, takže jsme měli s čím pracovat. Samozřejmě přesně to, co jsme očekávali, byl přínos ze zahraničí, to bylo pro nás velmi důležité. A já jsem za to rád, protože už dnes jsme hovořili například ze starostou Maďarska, že si budeme samozřejmě předávat zkušenosti. My bychom byli rádi, kdyby na to navázal výměný program, tak jak to tady zaznělo, to je přesně, co ten náš region potřebuje. Takže já z tohoto místa ještě jednou moc děkuji. Děkuji společnosti ICLEJ za skvělou spolupráci a těšíme se na další spolupráci, která nás čeká. Thank you so much. Please give a warm round of applause to our beneficiaries.
And I would like to welcome back Morit and Miriam on stage together with us. And we have 10 minutes for questions. Um, from the audience. You can ask questions directly about the experience of our beneficiaries or about the programs that have been presented and directly to Miriam and Moritz. And I will first check if there are any questions online. There are, okay. So we have an online question that's directed at Moritz. In many regions, there's a lack of good quality just transition projects. How do you think that just transition practitioners could make better use of the case studies that you've prepared? In some ways, perhaps, by translating them into their own language, presenting them to local audience, making brochures specific to their region. And related to this a bit is also, can we, given copyright rules, can regions use these case studies and transform them in a way that would be useful for them? Thank you very much for the question. <clears throat> what we try to do is um, to provide case studies which are helpful for the region, so that's what they're there for. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the main uh, cause. And we are um, very interested in, in hearing if there is any specific uh, case studies that, that the regions would like to, to hear about, and then, of course, we can extend it. As I said, there's um, a broad range of material already out there and it is going to be extended also over the next year um, and I think um, what the regions how they can best use it is, is to um, uh, what we try to do is is to um, provide the information in a, in a short and concise way so we all of the material that we provide, is, is those are not long reports, but we try to make them as short as possible so that they're accessible uh, to everybody, and we know nobody has a lot of time to, to read through all of them. So um, we try to make it short. These materials, if needed, they uh, can be in local language. We've um, also discussed about that in, in April. We are able to translate those documents. If there's a sp specific need, um, I don't know who, who asked that question, um, please approach us directly, and also um, making use of the documents. I mean, um, those are documents of, of, of DG Regio. Um, I don't know what exactly, how, it wants, how, how they want to use it, but I would say please approach us um, what their ideas, and, and then we can, we can just discuss that. We can take questions from the audience in the room. Yes, please. Uh, thank you, Eliza Barna from Bankwatch Romania. I was left with two words from Ms. Mishak's uh, presentation, and those are accountability, ownership and credibility. And I think it's uh, valid across East Central Europe that in these regions, there is a very low level of trust in public institutions stemming also from the way that the transition to the market economy uh, was done. And I would like to, to have your take on what was the best, what were the best measures for increasing ownership and public trust in public institutions in this process? Thank you for this question. You're absolutely right. I couldn't agree more. There is a low level of trust. And I think that we will uh, a, a bigger ownership of the rule that we have uh, adopted in a dialogue by better application and better implementation of uh, uh, of, our, of our intervention. Because we and we assume that if people, if potential entrepreneurs, they take part in the process of designing the rules, their uh, willingness to stick to these rules will be much, much better. And it was uh, in one of the panel on the communication, it was also stated that we must be credible because sometimes we promise something. Uh, we uh, encourage people to, uh, to go, to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to speak, and after that, there is no follow-up. So by 
implementing this uh, SME uh, tailor-made scheme, we also send the signal to our beneficiary that, listen, uh, believe us, trust in us, uh, there is a follow-up. We are in, in the process. We build it together. So I think that we will, uh, we are not going to undertake any research on how the credibility and the accountability and the uh, ownership uh, rows actually, but no doubt that we will observe it while implementing these projects. Thank you. Are there any more questions in the room? Doesn't seem so. Online? Are there any more questions online? No? Okay, then um, we still have four minutes left. So maybe th we can ask one more question to our beneficiaries. Um, I was wondering, and I think this question has been posed yesterday to our Portuguese beneficiaries, namely, how do you ensure that the work is continued after the technical assistance team is gone? How can we ensure that there is a strong ownership and continuation of the results to open to everyone? holding the microphone, so I will take the then opportunity you. <laughs> to speak. So uh, we, we will implement this intervention, okay? So it will be uh, put into life, which is, uh, which is very exciting, and uh, I, uh, I like, uh, I look forward to, to implementing it. What's more, as I said, um, me as a member of um, managing authority, I would, I'm very strictly committed and determined to uh, implement this approach uh, in other policy challenges. Because I must say that personally I have learned uh, some techniques, some methods to involve stakeholders, and I'm going to use this methodology in other, in other uh, challenges. For example, we have a uh, we have a debate and we are thinking about uh, bottom-up uh, civil society initiatives to uh, raise the awareness of the transition process and to wake up the civil society in our area. And again, I think that the best way to tackle this problem, to, to take this issue, is to talk, to, to have a dialogue. So, the methodology will be, uh, will be uh, used uh, in practical life. Thank you so much. We cannot continue any further because people want to catch their trains. So I will hand over, oh, you wanted to share? Uh, so maybe please one sentence and then I will hand over to Miriam for closing uh, remarks. Jen krátce. My samozřejmě se připravujeme na odchod, a nejsme rádi, že odejde technická pomoc, Tím, že jsme například vytvořili pozici uvolněné radní města, tady kolegyně sedí, která by měla komunikovat se všemi těmi aktéry. Vytvořili jsme nad těmi 11 pracovními skupinami řídící výbor, kde jsou lídři těch pracovních skupin a připravujeme se na tu další fázi, abychom implementovali vlastně výstupy z toho plánu spravedlivé územní transformace a z výstupu té technické pomoci, která v současné době pracuje v našem území. Thank you so much, Petsch. Over to you, Miriam, for closing remarks. Thank, thanks a lot, Victoria. I think uh, that uh, um, the three of you uh, have uh, uh, shared your experience and for the ones who were having doubts whether to apply to the uh, grant work, I think uh, now we can say you, you have convinced everybody. <laughs> Um, not only by saying that uh, uh, you are unlocking uh, with this assistance uh, the existing uh, uh, energy in the regions, uh, giving inspiration, uh, adding your expertise uh, to the one that exists already in the regions, and that you have learned also new techniques to be uh, developed further after the project finishes. So I think uh, this is very successful for me. Uh, this is my conclusion that uh, we, we see uh, this as the first package of support, not only for your three projects, but we have seen also the other three 
uh, beneficiaries during this uh, uh, conference who have also shared a very positive experience. So I would say that uh, our aim is to continue and expand the support. Uh, we want to uh, support as many uh, uh, territorial just transition beneficiaries of territorial just transition plans as possible with the support. So we will launch new assistance uh, under 2024. Uh, please also discuss with the geo units who are in charge uh, of uh, your uh, territory to see and to prepare as of now, because as uh, you indicated, it's very uh, important that you think and shape uh, your requests as well as possible so that the support can be unlocked uh, and correspond to your needs as much as possible. Um, I think uh, we can close this session with this very positive conclusion uh, and uh, I, we hope to see you uh, next year also and we stay in touch in between. Thanks a lot. Thank you.